It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? They are CBS News correspondents Larry Lasseur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Thomas H. Kekel, United States Senator from California. The fact that the Republicans are going to hold their presidential nominating convention in San Francisco next year certainly underscores what most of us suspected, that the state of California is beginning to outshine most of the East in political importance. Senator Kegel, the state of California is not only important politically, but it's interesting politically. We ask you just where you stand in these recurrent arguments between your senior senator, Mr. Noland, and the president on questions like the defense of the offshore islands from China. Yes, let me say this uh, to you, first of all, uh, I believe that the overwhelming vote which the Congress of the United States gave to the Formosa Resolution uh, indicates that the government and the people of the United States are completely in accord with the need for the islands of Formosa and the Pescadores to remain in uh, the hands of Free China. I think that's conceded to be the position of every military leader in this country from the President, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General MacArthur, and others. I voted for that resolution. That resolution clothes the President with such authority as he may deem appropriate uh, to see that that island chain uh, remains free of communist aggression. Now, so far as the intervening islands are concerned, in my judgment, that constitutes a problem for the president under the Formosa Resolution. In other words, whether or not the islands of Komoi and Matsu uh, should be protected by the military might of the United States is a question of tactics, of judgment, of decision by the president himself as to their importance uh, with respect to the Formosa Resolution. The the responsibility is the president's. That's where, in my judgment, it should be. That's where the people of this country would want it to be. Uh, he is the only person uh, in the government of our country uh, who is uh, capable and qualified on the basis of understanding all the facts to make that decision. And so I shall approve, uh, both as a, a citizen and as a senator, the decision which he makes uh, if he is required to make it. In other words, without criticizing Senator Nolan, do you uh, back the president in his view? As yes, on, sir. That, as that, that is my position well, exactly. Tell me, is there going to be a big fight in the uh, San Francisco Convention Halls next year over the question of who is going to be vice president? There is a lot of vi uh, jockeying for that position right now. Well, let me say this to you. Of course, first of all, in your, uh, in your question and the way you phrase it, I'm sure you are assuming, as I do, that the president uh, will be nominated again by the Republican National Convention. Uh, if that happens, as I believe it will, then I think it has been the traditional history of political conventions that the candidate for president pretty much indicates to the convention who he desires to have as his running mate. On that basis, it will then be the decision uh, for President Eisenhower to make. Now, uh, I would assume that the cordiality of uh, uh, the president and the vice president uh, since they both came into office, the manner in which the president has delegated uh, additional authority to uh, Vice President Nixon, uh, that the President probably would be uh, minded to indicate the same choice in the next convention that uh, he did in the last. Well, Senator, why have the Republicans chosen San Francisco as the site for the convention next year? Well, of course, I, uh, 
would like to say, first of all, as a good Californian, that I think it is recognition on the part of a, a great national political organization of the growing importance, uh, not alone of California, but of Western America. California will have the uh, second largest delegation uh, at the convention, or at any rate, it will have the same uh, strength as Pennsylvania does. Uh, California's uh, vote in the next uh, presidential election will be important. And I believe that is part of the reason why the convention went there. Now, there's one more reason, as I see it. In my judgment, the people of California are pretty generally in favor of the uh, way in which our federal government has been handled these last two years. I'm not going to say they agree with everything that's come along, and I'm certainly not going to say it's unanimous. But I believe I can tell you that the state of California is a pro-Eisenhower state. And I think that's another reason why the convention is being held there. Senator Kekel, you assume, nevertheless, that the vice presidential nominee is going to be a Californian, I take it. Yes, I think that's a pretty good assumption. <laughs> well, actually, to go back to the case of your senior senator, Senator Noland, uh, he said not long ago that he wasn't in favor of drafting a reluctant man to be president of the United States. And apparently he was referring to uh, Eisenhower. Now, do you feel that uh, the Republicans can win without Eisenhower? I think the Republican candidate for president uh, two years from now uh, can make a very strong case to the American people on the basis of how our government is being conducted today and how it has been conducted these last two years. But the uh, question, I must add, I think is a little academic because in my judgment, the American people uh, want uh, Dwight Eisenhower to continue as their leader. And I am sure, I don't know how you would define the word draft, but speaking for myself, I am sure that the uh, Republicans of this nation uh, will indicate very vigorously that they want uh, Dwight Eisenhower to make the necessary sacrifice to continue for four more years shouldering what is a, a heavy burden on, on any man who inhabits the White House. Well, Senator, from what you say, I gather that you believe that President Eisenhower will not be a reluctant candidate, but a willing candidate to run again. I think this. Here is, a, here is a man who has shouldered uh, leadership for the last quarter of a century that has been tremendous. Uh, uh, military decisions that have been his have been uh, uh, the most onerous kind uh, to bestow upon a man's shoulders. Uh, I don't uh, know that uh, we would begrudge uh, the president uh, a desire to live a few years in comparative peace but he's a man that has uh, run his life by uh, duty and what duty requires of him, and I believe on that basis, uh, he would accede again uh, to what he felt was his duty and a call to that duty by the people of this country. Well, Senator Kiko, there seems to be some doubt in the mind of the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Noland. Uh, now, do you think that Senator Noland is a candidate then for president? I don't think that... Uh, Bill Noland is a candidate for president in the sense that he is uh, opposing Dwight Eisenhower. And let me say this, because Bill Noland is my friend and uh, uh, Bill and I have worked together in the Senate. And I say that in spite of the fact that I've disagreed with him on a number of, of, of occasions. Uh, uh, Bill Noland has helped in the Senate to write into law a great portion of the recommendations of the president. So on that basis, no, I, I do not want to say because I do not believe that uh, Senator Noland is a candidate for, for the presidency in the sense that he's opposing uh, the president of the United States. Senator Kekel, uh, the California sh sun may be outshining the east politically, but how about figuratively? What are you people doing out there about all the smog we hear about? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, so far as air pollution is concerned, it has ceased to be a problem for the people of the city of Los Angeles alone. Uh, you here in New York a year or so ago uh, ran into a day or so of what the local newspapers called smays. 
and across this country, uh, particularly in the populated areas, uh, you have had uh, considerable air pollution. Uh, that has been uh, a subject attacked pretty much by local government. I've interested myself in it in Washington and have introduced legislation along with my colleague and the two uh, senators from Pennsylvania to authorize the federal agencies, uh, which <coughs> the appropriate federal, federal agencies, the Department of Health, Education and Welfare, Commerce and Interior, to utilize their scientific research and tackle the problem of air pollution on a, on a federal level to supplement the uh, inquiry scientifically that is now going on by local government. And I, I want to tell you that uh, just in the last uh, two or three days, as a result of a meeting with members of the uh, several agencies, uh, I look forward to that legislation passing. The President uh, uh, observed the problem when he spoke to the Congress in his uh, State of the Union message, so that there is a national aspect to this question of air pollution. In other words, the climate of California isn't changing, but you're making all that smoke out there yourself. <laughs> well, thank you very much, <laughs> Senator Kekel of California. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Thomas H. Kekel, United States Senator from California. Longines has perfected, after 20 years of development, what is regarded as the most advanced automatic watch in the world. The exclusive self-winding mechanism is fabricated with a perfection which represents a new triumph for Longines craftsmanship. Here are facts that you should know. An automatic watch is wound by the movement of a pendulum or a rotor. Now this diagram represents the winding rotor of many automatic watches. See how it moves only in half a circle. And this diagram represents the Longines automatic. It has a full swing. 360 degree winding rotor. Every movement of the wrist produces winding action. Design, however, is only the beginning of the Longines automatic. What makes a Longines watch so superlatively fine is the unsurpassed perfection of Longines manufacture, which has won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Finest quality is your first consideration. Then, whatever your needs in a watch, whatever the style, whatever the purpose, Longines has made it for you. And every Longines watch will demonstrate in full measure the greater accuracy, complete reliability, which has made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. At Longines Whitnor Jewelers, see Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by Le Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by variations in the temperature of the atmosphere. Atmos, product of Le Coultre, division of Longines Whitnor. <laughs>